Okay, welcome to this new video. Now this is part of my chess series. What I am looking to do is to actually play some classical chess on Lee Chess, probably my favorite website to play chess on, to share my thoughts with you during the game and then to analyze the game afterwards, seeing where I could have improved, perhaps played better. When I talk to my students, ah, looks like we're going to start, excellent. When I talk to my students, they often ask how to improve. And the way that I find to improve is to play long play games, so 15 minutes with a 15 second increment, and then to really analyze and go over that afterwards. So I'll play my first move very quickly. I tend to play the Scandinavian defense against E4. I have played before E5 in the past, um, I've also played the French as well, but I find that the Scandinavian, which I'm going to play, um, if he plays knight c3, I'll play queen d8, um, is a quite a reliable opening. It's not the most exciting, it's true, but you get positions that you can often understand. Now we're going to play this knight f3 variation, which is underrated. I agree, I think, with John Bartholomew um, that... It, it can actually be quite challenging uh, for the black player because you do need to know some theory. Now the idea of white is to play d4 and c4 and get this ideal pawn center. Now the way to approach is black is to counter attack immediately. So I'm going to play the move bishop g4. That means I'm threatening to double the pawns after bishop takes f3. Um, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, queen takes f3, g takes f3. But he defends the knight with bishop e2. And now black needs to play knight c6. Again, take some stake in the center and to look to castle queenside immediately. Now, knight c3 isn't one of the most demanding moves for black. It's looking like he doesn't want this ideal pawn center. So I just move my queen back to d7. So I'm protecting the bishop over here. And look to queenside castle. Now he's castled kingside. Now the question is whether I want to castle queenside immediately or I want to play e5. Uh, e5 to claim a stake in the center. One thing you have to be aware of is knight jumps um, to attack this bishop over here. So e5, knight takes e5 should be fine. After knight takes e5, I've got two defenders on the bishop. So in that case, I think I will play e5. I will look to castle very soon, probably on the next move. If white plays something ordinary like d3, for example, then I will castle queenside. Okay, knight e4. Now he's kind of breaking one of the rules, in, one of the opening rules in chess, which is to move the same piece twice in the opening. His idea, I suspect is to play c4 and d4 at some point. Question is, do I queenside castle straight away, or do I play a sort of stabilizing move such as f6? That is the question. There are other moves, of course. You could think about bishop e7, I guess. That's a move. Or even f5 could be a bit more aggressive. Uh, after f5, I assume knight g5 could be an interesting try. But... The only issue with f5 is then this pawn may become weak at some point. But it's certainly something I should consider. f5, knight g3 possibly. Might be a way to play as well. f5, knight g3. e4. Where exactly is that knight going? Knight e1 maybe? Doesn't look very convincing. Bishop takes, queen takes. That could be a move, actually. F5. And consequences from there. F5, knight, g5, h6. I think he just has to move the knight back to h3. And I can double his pawns. Hmm. Actually, the more I look at f5, the more I think it's interesting. I kind of want to punish white for playing such a non-standard, so to speak, opening move. F5, knight g3, e4. 
No, G5. But there's certainly chances where it could be trapped. I just be a little bit careful. So if I look at this again, so F5. Knight G3, E4, Knight G5, Bishop takes E2, Queen takes E2, H6, he's got Queen H5 at some point. I can block, of course. Mm, there's a lot of arrows on the board, I really realise. But it's worth thinking about this. F5, knight g3, e4. The bishop's protected, that's the thing, so it's not as if it will get exchanged off very quickly. I'm going to try it. It looks interesting. I don't see any direct way against it. So let's have a look. F5. Now, when you've played a move that's obviously quite tactical, and you do need to be thinking on their time. So. I'm calculating, my main calculation will be knight g3, because I think he wants to play c4 and d4 at some point. So knight g3, do I play e4 immediately? I don't have to, of course. Knight g3, e4, knight e1, exchange. No castle. Okay, so he's going to play knight c3. So kind of like a wasted move almost in some ways. I can play e4 now. And he's got knight e1 or knight h4 to play. I don't have to rush that move necessarily. I could just queenside castle or play knight f6. If I play knight f6, standard developing move, then you play h3. I could be a little bit careful as no knight takes e5 and the bishop is hanging. So I'll be a little bit careful about that. So if knight f6, h3, I probably have to take and then play e4, which certainly looks interesting. Because I'm going to get quite an attack going when these pawns move up the board once I've queenside castled. I mean, I think knight f6 is a good developing move. Controlling the center. He can play d3 after that to stop e4. That's true. Maybe I do want to play e4 immediately, but he can still play d3 at some point. So this is the this is the issue. Okay, I'm not entirely sure how I want to push where I want to push e4 or play knight f6 immediately. So I may just queenside castle. Queenside castle, is bishop b5 a problem? Probably not. Ah, uh, maybe I have to be a little bit careful of something like queenside castle. And there might be some sacrificing play bishop g4 pinning the queen. Maybe knight f6 is just a sensible move. It doesn't allow him to play knight g5 though. And the, these squares are quite weak. That is an issue. Well, I've got to make a move, otherwise I'm wasting too much time. I don't think it makes a huge amount of difference. Okay, let's play knight f6. If in doubt, develop. Okay, knight e1, so he plays back voluntarily. Hmm. Kind of means I have to exchange off the bishop. I don't have to. For example, I could just play a developing move. I could play bishop c5, for example. If he takes, knight takes. A little bit of pressure around the king. I don't really want to exchange the bishop. I was thinking of something quite radical like h5. But then f3 traps the bishop. Thing is, if I play any developing move, plays h3, I have to take. So that's something I have to be aware of. 
the only thing with bishop c5 is things like knight a4. You have to watch out for things like that. But I could play bishop back and exchange it off. But I want to keep that bishop really. I don't really want to exchange it off. What I'd like to do is just get on with some developing and show that this knight is a bad piece. So I could play castles, even take the pawn, possibly. Bishop d6 runs in knight b5 as well. I'm going to have to be wary of exchanging off the bishop. Or I could take directly and play knight d4. But this pawn is protected by the knight. Hmm. Bishop takes e2. Hmm. I feel like I'm letting him off somehow. Don't really want to damage my pawns. Then to take with a knight, you can just push it back and. Well, then it'd be more of a hook, wouldn't it? So I can play g5, g4. Okay. That looks interesting. Play queenside castle. Okay, so he plays d3, sensible. Okay, so you might want to play bishop e3, or even bishop g5. I was thinking of h6, just preparing g5. Again, there's no threats with h3. I can just take immediately. I'm not quite sure where this bishop wants to go. That's my issue at the moment. On here, the rook's protecting f2. It's actually caused many problems. I want to play king b8 at some point, but I have to do it immediately. Oh, the h6 and g5, and then just charge the pawns forward. That seems a logical plan to do. It stops him coming to bishop g5 as well, so he's got to decide on a square like e3. Got to watch out for some like big b4 push at some point, but I don't think it works at the moment. Okay, let's play that. Still takes is not a problem. I can take back. h3 again helps my plan in some ways, even though kind of lost the tempo with the knights, I can then play g5. I've got a hook then to open the position with g4. Okay, so that's forced, so I have to take on them. Okay, now he's got a bit of pressure on here. We might want to play the knight back at some point. Or I'll play knight, no, I can't play knight d4 immediately, it drops the pawn. g5, which is what I want to play, essentially. Knight f3. And then bishop d6. And the attack looks pretty strong to me. And there's not much counterplay for, black, uh, for white, so that's the key point. He's got f4, but I can just take. Or even play knight d4 first. I've always got his knight d4. But I like to have that as a threat over the position. So let's play g5. Seems sensible. Is g4 a threat really? He can play h4. Then there might be some interesting tactics. So g4, h4, and then g3, sacrificing a pawn. But after takes here, you can block with the bishop, that's true. So maybe g4 is premature, possibly. He's attacking e5 twice, so I might have to do something about that. In fact, this might be a good time just to play sensible developing move. Bishop d6, protecting the pawn. He can play rook e1, but it doesn't actually threaten to take the pawn. I think bishop d6 is a logical choice here. Developing a piece, allowing my rooks to be connected. Maybe I can play rook g8 next. I think that's the move I have to play. And play it quite quickly. Okay, let's play that. I certainly like Black's position here. I don't know how good it is. Thing is, yeah, there's no counterplay. Okay, he plays knight b5, which makes sense. Okay, 
At least g4 comes with opening position. I mean, knight b5 doesn't actually threaten much, does it? Since there's no sacks or anything. Knight takes a7, knight takes here. So, no, I think that's just a piece. That's fine. I still want to play king b8. I mean, is there actually any rush to play any moves here? And king b8 actually might just be sensible. Avoid any tactics. Okay, let's play king b8. We can take him here, of course. Yep. But now I can take back with the pawn, which is interesting. That really does stabilize this pawn, and there's no way of opening the C file at the moment, so I think I'm going to take with the pawn. Because all my play is going to be on the king side here. I'm going to play g4 at some point. g4, knight h4. Okay, and he's going to play the logical move. He wants to play the knight away, so g4 has less potency. But I do now have the option of knight d4. Sometimes when you play chess, you do need to look at the squares that he's giving up. So if he moves the f3 knight, he's giving up the d4, a square essentially. So it gives me knight d4 as a tempo move. It's forced to come back to d1. And then maybe I can play g4. g4, h4. And then go from there into position. Because knight d4 allows my queen then to come to c6. I'm attacking here twice. But I still might just hold that threat over him. And bring my rook to a better square. So when g4, g3 comes, I can take with the rook at the end. And then double rooks. I do have to watch out for f5 being weak. But that's why my queen wants to stay here. So... He may want to come with his knight to c4, but again, that doesn't really do anything. Or here. So I think I'm going to play a sensible move. I'm just going to play... Ah, wait a minute. Rook g8. I can play g4. You can play g4. Yeah. That's an issue. I can also bring the knight to d5 as well. Is g4 actually an idea? It looks awfully weak, weakening though. I don't want to close the position up. So maybe g4, h4. It does look very nice. Maybe I should play g4 immediately. g4, h4. Then play rook cross. He plays g3 to try and block everything up. And I've got f4. Which could be very dangerous. Okay. Let's play g4. Again, I'm running out of time as well. So I do need to be a bit more conscious of time. Okay, so he plays that immediately. I could play f4 immediately, of course. Okay, let's play rook g8. So there is a slight threat of yeah playing knight in here and then knight there. That's true. I really just want to open the position. The problem is this knight's undefended. I need to move more quickly as well. So a bit more subtle move like Rook c8, I'm actually indirectly attacking here. So I want to bring the queen to the diagonal as well. Or sacrifice something on one of these two squares. Because if I play knight d4, he plays queen d1 and then kicks my knight away. So f4, knight e4 takes. f4, knight e4, knight e5. Complicated. Hmm. 
I need to do something. I like this F5 point, it's just restricting. Then if we knight d5, I just want to hover that threat of f4 over him, whether it's good or not, mind you. And see if I can decide on the plan from there. And knight c4 doesn't really do anything. Ah, but now he's given up the f3 square, he hasn't got any protection on that, so I think now it's a good time to play knight d4. So I can get there of check, which is going to make a huge amount of difference. Then, wherever he moves to, I can then play queen e7, looking to sack on there. Or even possibly sack on there. Yeah, this is now looking very, very good. I don't have much time, that's the only issue. But he's played it like a blitz game. He hasn't really thought about what he's doing. So, knight in here has got to be the move. I assume he's going to play king g2. It's king g2. He plays there. I really want to break open the position. I could play something more subtle, of course, like Queen C6. Knight A5. It all looks very, very good. Okay, Queen C6 looks an interesting move because I'm then threatening to sack and then play my knight somewhere. So let's play there. Queen C6. He's playing so quickly. He should play something like Knight A5 really to disrupt my plan. I may be played in Queen A6 or something. So Queen C6. Knight A5 is the only thing I'm really considering, otherwise Knight F4 is probably going to be deadly. Knight F4 takes, Knight takes H4, double check, and that's over. I think he's got to play Knight A5. Anything else is probably losing. Right, so he does play that. Maybe I can do a little bit of work here. So, Queen a6, so attacking that. Bishop d2 maybe, then b6 and Queen b7. Okay, so he's just trying to go back and forth, but now I can play b5. It's a bit loosening, I understand, but my real key threat is Queen c6 or Queen b7. If I can get that in, this position looks very, very tough. Right, so again, I don't really mind that. Queen c6 takes, takes c4, but I still double check. This is the important part. So, can he take on f5? No is my quick answer. That I could just take, of course. And I could take and then play Queen C6. Just get remove that threat. We might be able to sack the exchange back, which is probably a decent try actually. Do I can I just play Queen C6 immediately? Check. Might be a safer option. Takes. He takes the has to take with the pawn, I think, and then it gives him a chance to sack the exchange. It's a little bit. Still think that's a sensible move to do, though. You might take with the bishop, in which case this is just deadly. It gives him the chance to go wrong. That's the key thing you're looking for. F takes was much better. The thing is, his king can't actually move. This is the question. It can't go here or here. If it goes here, I've still got this threat of knight takes h4. Or just any other discovery. Maybe even knight e1. Which I made now play, of course. I think I'll take the pawn for three. So that gives me two extra pawns. And now I'll take him there. 
So two pawns are basically nothing. You might even sack the exchange back if uh, no choice there. Again, I've got lots of threats here. I've got f4. If takes, then I just might even push up. Uh, I suppose it hangs that, but looks very, very tricky. Okay, so he's going to sack the exchange, but I think, again, I'm so much material up here. I think I'll just take with. Uh, do I want to take with the queen? To take with the pawn and threatening. Probably want to keep queens on the board, actually. I think about it a bit more logically. I'm still attacking here. I've got two threats, I've got pushing the pawn and just taking on here. So yeah, I'll take the pawn. Yeah. Why exchange queens off when I've got such a great attack going? Yeah, and this is basically lost. So I'm just gonna take on here. Queen of King F2. I've got rook here. I've got any other options? Rook there, King F1. This double rooks. Double rooks might just Got queen h1 then. Ah, but then I've got check. Ah, I'm also attacking c2. So actually, let's get another piece in the game. Can't play queen over here because he's still going to need to protect this. a4 maybe? I think this rook g2 threat is too strong. And five points up in material. Ah, I could even play f4 actually. Maybe f4 is even better. Yep, c4 is trying to defend that, but um, I may even play f4 immediately. Don't think it matters in the move order actually. Well, that gives me a check actually, so. Play that. If he takes on here, I can take here with check position sug. Important thing to realise. So he's sacrificing that. Can I just take it? There's no check, is there? No check. Okay. So I'll take that. So now this will be mate or winning a lot of material. Notice. Okay, so he's going there. That's check. Queen here, only move. You may resign at this point. I think it's quite obvious that Queen here is the only move. King can't escape anywhere. Then I take on here and then play another position to get out of the attack. And I'll be a Queen up. This is a nice game to start off my series on standard chess. I think I played reasonably well made some good practical decisions. Sometimes it's tempting to go into forcing variations where it's not needed, essentially. Um, so let's have a, a quick look at the game without the engine's help for first. You should always look at the game without the engine's help. Ah, but my opponent is typing in on the engine. So let's just see what the engine comes up with. Um, points about this game. I don't think White played the most testing moves. Uh, it would be interesting to see if f5 is the best move for the computer. I don't think it necessarily has to be. Uh, ah, interesting. It says e5 was an inaccuracy. I should play a bit more humbly with e6. That would be interesting why that's the case. I thought generally I played well. What did the engine say? So I made one huge mistake. Oh dear. Uh, two mistakes and three inaccuracies. Okay, so why is this an inaccuracy? Ah, because of that threat of knight takes e5. Okay, so knight here. I thought this would be good. And d4. Ah, because I've got a pin on there. I always thought e5 was the move, but maybe castling queenside was better. I'd like to e6, but that's not the move I want to play, really. Uh, let's look at the opening book. Yeah, queenside castles, maybe then. Is the move to play or knight f6? Yeah, I can see logic of both. Okay, it's interesting. I need to work on my Scandinavian theory. 
Okay, queenside castle is the best. Yep, that makes sense. And then after d4, got the option of taking on f3. Okay, let's have a quick look at that. So e, castle queenside, b4. Okay, I can understand why someone would like to play that. Really open up queenside. That does scare me a little bit, actually. Yeah, d4 is probably a blunder of the pawn. d3, and then e5. Okay, so play that way. Okay, that makes sense. Um, okay, so knight e4 is a bad move. It likes f5. It does protect the bishop as well, so it prevents that tactic from before. Uh, knight e1 is a mistake. Looks a mistake. Yep, it likes my move, queen side castle. Not reacting too much to it. Okay, so I played pretty well. Okay, king b8 probably saw as yeah, a little bit of a scaredy cat move, so to speak. Rook h8, bring the rook to the center. Yeah, certainly central play is logical here as well. And just protect the pawn in the middle. I can see the logic of that. But I don't think, I think king b8 is also a sensible move, really, to be fair. Okay, and. Okay, so rook h g8. Best was knight d4 immediately. There's probably some concrete reason why. So here. Why would that be better straight away? Is there some sacrifice on f3? Maybe, maybe now rook g8. C3, knight comes to here, check. Knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. I've opened up the G file, attacking the pawn. And then queen G7, maybe, protecting this pawn. That doesn't seem convincing to me. Maybe the computer has a different mind. I'll come back to that. Okay. Oh, and I blundered. Knight d5. Interesting. Knight d4 again. Yeah, maybe knight d5 is just. Yeah, it, it, you're putting a piece on defending square. It's not quite obvious where it's going. Knight d5. Yeah, it's a shocking move, apparently. Best move is to play. Yeah, okay, and then that standard plan of f4. Okay, that makes sense. What happens after, yeah, c3, that was my concern. Then, ah, oh, you bring the knight back to f5. Okay, I didn't see that, as you know from the video. So knight f5, and then, yeah, you've got a lot of threats you're attacking here. There might even be a sacrifice here as well. Maybe even drop that into f3 to weaken up the g3 square. Let's see how the computer analyzes it from there. So knight e4, it's a slight concern of mine. And then you just hammer on that g3 weakness. So b3, d5, forcing it away, a little bit of defensive work, d4, and then you're just crashing through on that square there. Yep, certainly. That's a good try, I think. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so I didn't like knight d5 because of c3. Just because that knight d4 move is such a threat, it stops a lot of my play with the knight coming in. And my attack, yeah, it's not obvious where my attack's going then, is it? If I have to play f4, then knight e4 protects a lot of different squares. Also threatening a fork, if I play c4. So yeah, you can certainly see why the computer likes that. As a defensive strategy. So yeah, knight e5 was kind of... You can see the logic behind it, but it's not getting to the essence of position, which is get that knight in, get f4 going, and attack these weaknesses over here. Okay, but then I did get knight d4, and so that was his chance to stop me playing knight d4. And then knight f3 check, king h1 there probably was better. And queen c6 was fine. And it wants me to play knight f4 immediately. Oh, yeah, because I still have the double check, don't I? Of course, yeah. Why not I just play knight f4 immediately? It's a bit stupid. I don't need to worry about this queen a6, although it's not actually that bad. But yeah, knight c4. 
You can't take it, of course. Ah, oh, King H1, I suppose. And then there's still these two, two threats. I guess I'm playing Queen D5. I'm attacking here. And I'm threatening this as well. You can play something like C4. Hmm. I'll take one here, take this there. Ah, and then I open up the d4 square. And that becomes very unpleasant. Uh, yeah, because you can't exchange queens off either. I thought he'd have something like queen e1 or queen d c2 or something, but no, he doesn't. He can't. Ah, queen d5. Ah, it does have something. Got mates on there, isn't it? Take, yeah, that's, I don't know, that's just not convincing. I have to look at that again with the computer. I can't see. I mean, getting a lot of pawns, of course, for the piece, but again, I'm not sure how effective that is. Okay. Bishop d2, it recommended. Play d3. I took, and the, yeah, the computer says queen c6, so yeah, I think that's the difference between a sort of safe move and, the, yeah, we'll click here, move here. Yeah, he should have taken with the pawn, of course, I think we all saw that. Yeah, he's got rook f2, yeah, as a defensive measure. I'm still better, much better, but yeah, that's not obvious. And then, yeah, and then the rest was... Fairly straightforward. Okay, let's turn the engine on and let's see at those crucial points I was just looking at. Um, White disagreed with what I was looking at. So, yeah, we understood about the castling. Queen side. What was my next net? Christy, queen b8. Yeah, okay, that made sense. Rook hg8. Yes, and it's knight d5, London. We thought that, yeah, the computer thought after knight d4. Queen d1, f4, my attack was coming in, which I agree with. So, should have gone there straight away. But what happens after c3? Um, c3, knight f5, yeah, we looked at that. Okay, so next mistake. Queen a6. One could have played knight f4. Oh yeah, this is it. So let's have a look at this line here. See what the engine does. Hopefully it doesn't crash my computer in some way. So, knight f4. King h1, queen d5. I was looking at this c4 move, wasn't I? Oh, I can take the knight, of course. Yeah, of course I can take the knight, can't I? Take the knight. I'm still opening up his position. It still recommends that's the best move. Okay, so queen takes a5, g takes f4, and queen c7. That's a nice, nice maneuver, isn't it? Bring that round, so then we can take h4. And that looks very hard to stop. I can even take it with the knight, of course, and go to c6. Okay, that makes sense. And we've looked at everything else there as well. Okay, so an interesting game to start with. Um, I played that, yeah, in accuracy, I won't call it a mini blunder, actually, with e5. I should, of course, castle queenside there. But again, I think I exploited it effectively. I found this move f5, which is the most direct way to punish knight e4. And I got a very nice position after he played knight e1. Okay, so I think I played pretty well. Again, as hopefully I win more games, you'll see me play against uh, more quality opposition. Okay, thank you for now. Goodbye.